Hey there, everybody. So I am back in the saddle now. Um, getting uh, back in the swing of things to start spitting out more tutorials and get back into the flow of trying to work out some more details for the social media app as well as the marketplace app and to tackle some other requests that have come forward. So um, definitely getting back in into it and tonight I just want to start off with something really quick and simple um, but it's something important that I think everybody should know how to do um, and maybe you've already figured this out and you you don't need help with this but for those that don't know how this works this will definitely be useful to you um, what we're gonna cover tonight is how to upload multiple photos uh, using a single action uh, instead of having to upload each photo individually. Uh, if you've watched my social media uh, app tutorials as well as the marketplace tutorial tutorials, you'll uh, probably have noted that I uh, did not use multi-photo upload. Uh, I set one, two, or three different photo uh, uh, data fields inside a document and uploaded the photos individually. And I did that that way because I didn't want to get bogged down um, going over this specific thing. I wanted to save this for an individual tutorial. And then you can take the lessons learned here and apply it to your social media marketplace or other similar apps where being able to upload multiple photos at one time would be useful. So um, this is obviously in test mode and I just wanted to kind of show you how it works real quick and then we'll go into the back end and I'll show you how I got it set up. Um, there's a number of ways that you can set up how you want it to look. Um, if you followed along with any of my uh, short tutorials you'll know, notice that for the most part I don't really do much as far as design goes. Um, I spend most of the time just showing how things work and how to, how to make it uh, flow a certain way. Um, so you can kind of set it up however you want it to look. But anyway, uh, so I've got this button here, and when I tap this, it's going to give me the option to upload a bunch of photos. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, and it brings up my uh, uh, photo here to be able to, or my menu here to be able to upload a bunch of photos. So I'm going to just select these, and I'm going to upload four of those, and we'll go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so now you see that the upload button disappeared and now I've got these four photos in here um, in a list and a scrollable uh, list here. Um, and of course, if I click on one, I can expand it and look at it like that. Uh, you'll probably note that I don't have a delete button on any of these. Um, I'm not sure if it's a bug with Flutterflow or if I'm just got something messed up in, in what I'm doing. Uh, but looking at some of my other apps where I've done this, it's, it's working correctly to be able to delete one of these items. So I don't really know what the issue is when I set up the workflow with the delete option in this uh, test here. <clears throat> it's not throwing any errors and it's, it's um, the workflow is, is, the action flow and workflow is operating as it should on the back end but when i go into testing it won't do anything um i'm not entirely sure why so i've actually sent a message to flutterflow to try and see if they've got any ideas what's going on um but once i have a solution to that i'll i'll update this and, and let you know uh but essentially you would um i'm i'm using a dynamic children uh query to pull these these photos in here uh, from the upload and you know, essentially you would just um, use a delete button uh, to delete the uh, child at a certain index in this list. So anyway, uh, we'll figure out what that problem is and, and get it resolved. But in the meantime, <clears throat> we do have these photos in here. So now once I clicked, click create post, it brings me to my view post page, which it sets the very first photo I have this set up that the first photo in the list, which would be index number zero, it sets it as the primary larger photo. And then the rest of the photos, including that photo, are down here in this list, um, which is scrollable. But I've only got four photos in here, so it's not going to scroll past that. It's going to kind of move back and forth. All right, so that's what it looks like on this end. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look 
at the back end here real quick. All right, so this is what I've got going on on the back end. Um, as you can see, I've got all this stuff in here. So a few things that we want to take a look at. I'm going to, I've already got it all set up, so I'm not going to go through the process of recreating. I'll just show you how I've got it set up. So first, um, what I did was I have a row. So let's go over here and just bring this up real quick so we can look at our widget tree. Uh, I don't know what that's doing there. That can go away. All right. All right. And let me go ahead and just drop this down a little bit. Okay. So obviously we've got a, uh, a column that contains all of this so that we can have our row here as well as a button underneath. But right now we're just going to focus on this row. So I've got a primary row that's containing this button here or this container, and then it's containing a, uh, let me go down here, a secondary row within that. So maybe I should build it out so it makes more sense. All right, so I've got a row. And let me drop that down and get out of the way some. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this at the container. I'm gonna paste it in this row down here so that we can see it down in here. All right, <clears throat> now I've got another row which is containing my, um, my photos here. So I can, I'll just copy this as well, paste it in that row, okay? And then I've got a little bit of space between, let's see, I got four and four. So I'm gonna go into that internal row here and I'm going to go ahead and set that real quick. All right. Um, so one thing you want to do here before moving on. So this, this internal row, you're going to want to expand it <clears throat> to take up the full width of the, um, the external row. So internal row needs to take up the full width of this external row here. Um, if you don't do that, then it's going to give you that little error on the side saying that you're overflowing to the side, um, and it won't allow you to scroll. So you do want to set this internal row to expand. That way it expands all the way out. All right. So before moving on, well, actually, no, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and move on here. So, um, all right. So in this uh, external row here, I'm going to be querying, um, my, my uploads. Um, so this is already set. I've already got this all set down here. So let me, uh, let me go back down here real quick and I'll show you how I have the, the action flow set up. All right. So I'm highlighting the entire container here. I'm not just doing the icon button. I'm doing the, the whole container and I have this action set up to upload media to Firebase. I selected Firebase as the upload type. I selected allow photo. Well, it doesn't really give the option, but I have allow photo. Don't, don't allow video. And you have to select gallery um, to be able to upload multiple images. As you can see, if I turn it to camera or either camera or gallery, it does not let me upload multiple images. You can only do that from gallery. So you want to make sure that's selected. And then, of course, you want to make sure that allow multiple images turned on. Uh, you can show the snack bar to indicate that the upload is taking place or the upload has succeeded if you'd like to. And then your variable name, you can mess with that if you want to. But otherwise, you can leave all this stuff set. That's, that's how we want that. Okay, so go ahead and set that first before moving on to this part because uh, you want to make sure that you're, you're uh, producing an action that's uploading photos before you attempt to query that upload. Otherwise, there will be nothing for you to query. All right, so moving on here, I'm gonna to go to my internal row that is containing my picture, and I'm gonna do a uh, generating children, children from variable. Um, and so I'm gonna go in here into my variable and I'm gonna select the widget state. And uh, obviously this row up here is assigned to this button, but because I'm showing you how I'm doing this, I've got two upload 
file URLs. And you know what? It, I, I need to backtrack real quick and show you what I've got going on over here in our collections. Here's my post collection. I created uh, to have a document with a date created by content. I'm actually not using any of this really. And then main photo can go away because I'm not using that either. Um, for this tutorial, I am only using this additional photos data field. And I've set that data field as a list. So I went in here, set it as a list and selected photo path. So now I've got a image path and it's a list of items. Okay. Um, so that that's pertinent, obviously. Um, all right. So now we can go back. All right. So now I want to generate this and I'm going to go in here to my widget state and find my upload. So I love how flutter flow when you, you know, highlight over here, it'll highlight it in your, in your build over here to show you which one you're selecting. So I'm going to select file uh, URLs number two, uh, until we get through the, uh, this part of the tutorial. I'm going to select that and I'm going to do map list items. No further changes confirm. Um, and then my variable name, uh, I'll do photos list, uh, two. And I'm not going to set a max items. All right. So now I can query that. And now I'm generating a list of my photos um, from that, that upload that I just did. So whenever I tap on that in, in the test mode, like I showed you at the beginning, and it gave me the option to upload a bunch of photos, once I, once I upload them, they'll show up here. However, I still have to assign it here, obviously, uh, which it is already assigned. Let me delete that since I did that copy. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm actually pulling data to this photo, just like we do any other time. So we go to our path and we're going to go down here and we're going to select photos list two item, which is what I just queried. And now it'll show that photo there. Okay. And of course it'll show every photo down the line. Um, and of course we also want to uh, jump back here real quick. We do want to set this row to scrollable. That way you can swipe back and forth on that. And then uh, make image expandable. I do want that turned on, so I'm going to leave that like that so they can tap on it and blow that photo up if they want to. Okay, um, so that, that's all set to, to upload photos and then to show the photos in that list. Now, uh, next thing that we want to do is we want to set some conditional visibility. So as it stands right now, um, let me... Okay, I didn't copy that, that's right. Um, so if I were to turn expansion off on this, uh, like I said, it would give you an overflow error. So you don't want to do that. You won't be able to scroll. But the benefit of doing it that way is that if we go to our outer row here and we set our main axis alignment to center, that would center this box in the middle, which looks better than having it sitting over here on the left side of the screen um, whenever a, a user is getting ready to upload. That is if you're using this particular layout. You don't have to. You can do pretty much whatever you want here. It's just how I have it set up. Um, so I don't want this button to be over here on the side of the screen. So I could set the expansion to off, which would mean that this would be in the center of the screen. Um, but turning expansion off does not work because you'll throw that error on the side. So by having expansion turned on, it's going to push this box over to the far left. So how do we make it so that this box is in the middle um, until they, uh, the user uploads photos? Um, so the best way to do that that I've found is just use conditional visibility. Same thing with this box to hide this box. So let's go here first, container. As noted, after I uploaded the photos, this disappeared. So because I, I copied this and pasted it here, it's already set, but I'll go ahead and show you. Went in here and condition that I set, I went to conditions, single condition. And I went to widget state. And for this particular box, uh, since I'm dealing with this one, I'm actually gonna select upload a file uh, URLs number two. And I'm going to select number of items, confirm. And then I'm going to set, uh, you, can, you can pretty much set this however you want to set this, honestly, but I'm, I'm going to do less than specific value one. So 
So what this indicates is that this will be visible so long as this list of items is equal to zero, essentially, um, or has no items in it. Um, so long as there's uh, less than one items in the list, this box will be visible. So once I add a, an item, whether it's one, two, three, four, or however many items you want to allow, this box will disappear. Okay, and it's a similar similar setup here. You choose your internal row, you go to your conditional visibility, and we'll do a condition. We'll set our uploaded file URLs list number two, number of items, and then I'm going to do is uh, greater than or equal to specific value one. And so that way, this row will be invisible, which will, since this, this main outer row, main axis alignment is set to center, this internal row will be invisible so long as this list has no items in it, and therefore this box will be center of the main outer row. So hopefully that makes sense, okay? So extremely easy to set up. That's, that's how this is done here. Um, uh, as noted, uh, go to this external row. You don't want this external row to be scrollable. You just want this internal row to be, uh, well, that's on the picture, to be scrollable. So you can scroll the pictures back and forth. All right, so that's taken care of now. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that because I've got all this set up here. Um, and it's working as I intend it to. Just make sure everything is still good on here. Yep. Looks like everything's good, and this is still set to the photo item. Okay. All right, so now we have our create post, which our create post action is super simple. I just went ahead and plugged the date in there for no real specific reason. Uh, <clears throat> and then the additional photos field inside that document, I set value to uploaded uh, <clears throat> photo uh, video. Um, you don't want to add the first item, otherwise that would just add one item. You want to set the value as uploaded photo video, and that'll that'll set all uploaded uh, photos. It'll add them to that um, data list field of photos in your document, and it obviously will create the document as well. And then I have a navigate to action that'll navigate me to the view post page. And then if we go over here real quick to my view post page that I set up right here, this is how I have this set up. Very simple, not a whole lot going on here. Um, so I have, I have a column here that contains a main photo and then um, a row of uh, secondary photos down here. And then I have a list view that is generating a backend query to posts, list of documents, and that's it, nothing else set. All right, so now I want to set these things up to show um, the data that I'm pulling in here. So on this uh, picture right here, the, the main header picture, I wanna show the first item that was uploaded. So I'm gonna go in here to my, my post document. <clears throat> and let's just go ahead and do this from the beginning here. So I go in here and obviously I'm querying the post. So I'm going to grab my post document that's being shown here. Uh, and then I'm going to grab the additional photos list. So that's, that's all the photos that I uploaded in the previous step. And I'm going to do item at index. So I'm going to grab an item at a specific index. And it'll let you choose the first, the last, or specific that you set yourself. And obviously, I'm going to choose first because I want it to be the first photo that was uploaded. And then confirm that. And that'll show you your first your uh, first photo there. And then you can turn expandable on if you'd like. All right. So that'll give you the first photo that was uploaded. And then here in this row, uh, we're going to uh, do a dynamic uh, children from variable query. And I just titled it as photos list. Um, and then we're going to go, and, and again, this is, uh, where we go into our post document that's being queried by the list view, go down here and select our additional photos, uh, data field. Oops. And we'll map list items, item and list, no further changes, confirm. Uh, and then I don't have anything set here as a limiter. 
Um, so that, that now is querying uh, all the photos that were uploaded to that list. And obviously I want to set this row as scrollable so people can scroll back and forth. And then go to that image and tap on that first image and select the photos list item from that, that query that we set on that row. So that it'll show each individual photo. Okay. So very simple. That, that is the simple, straightforward way of setting that up. Um, there are other ways that you can display multiple photos. You could use a grid if you wanted to. Oops. Let's, uh, let's actually get rid of, uh, let's do this and get rid of that. And I'm going to get rid of this row. And then um, to, to do a grid view, I'm going to go here to this column and I'm going to drop in a container. Uh, and then we can move that down some, set that to infinite and set this to a variable height. And then in that container, I can go down through here and put a grid view in there. Um, and then I can grab a photo drop it in there and set and do this just give it some value here um and then the grid view i would i'd do a query on that just like i did with the row uh, post document uh additional photos map the items uh, let's set this to photo grid oops and then confirm and then I would set this to the uh, photo grid item. Okay, right. so it's it's doing the same thing that the row was doing. It's just now in a grid form. And then the grid, I don't know how much you've played around with the grid, but it's pretty neat. There's a lot of a lot of settings you can do with it. Um, as far as how you have things laid out, you can make stuff super small if you want to. Oops, that that's tiny. Um, that would, that'd be way too small. But like you could do eight. Uh, and change the uh, cross cross axis spacing and the main axis spacing and all of that. So pretty neat stuff that you can do. Um, so again, it's up to you how you want to have that set up, but that that's just a just an idea there um, of something that you can you can play around with. Um, get that back. There we go. Uh, so anyway, so that, that's a, that's a pretty cool um, way to set stuff up and you can use grid view or you can use um, you know, rows or columns or really whatever you want. Uh, but this just kind of give you an idea of the different ways that you can lay things out. All right, so I got this all loaded up. So we're still looking good here. So I'm going to add some photos. All right. So we've got our photos in here, create a post. And now we've got our post in here, expand that now. Um, and then we've got our secondary posts, our secondary photos as a, as a grid view going down instead of a scrolling list, okay? So again, really simple to set up. There's a number of different ways you can do it. You can set limiters on how many photos they can upload. Um, you could set a limiter on how many photos are displayed. Uh, obviously you can, make this look more like a social post and have uh, content with, with written content and information about the user and the, the date and time and everything that it was posted and likes and comments and stuff like that. But this, again, is just a general rundown of how to upload multiple photos and then display them after, after creating a document with those photos. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, uh, shoot me a message. Uh, you can check my um, about me section uh, for my channel. Uh, and there should be a link there for uh, Discord, um, a Discord server that I got set up. Some people have joined it uh, so that we can kind of collaborate and troubleshoot and go through problems folks may, may be having. So you're welcome to join there and get connected if you'd like to. Um, but otherwise, uh, this is it for tonight. Um, tutorial took just a little longer than I expected it to, uh, but oh well, I think it's worthwhile. Um, 
and I will be uh, hammering out some more uh, throughout the week. So be looking for those, and I will talk to all of you later. Take care.